Hello everyone on Facebook. Wow, what a show I have lined up for you today. It's called The Courage to Untether Your Soul. In studio with me, I have Kirsten Asher, who is an expert on feminine presence and, and the, the new age of femininity that's coming into the world. Also, I have in studio Denise Muller Karenik, and Denise just broke the uh, world record for bicycling at 183.9 miles per hour on Bonneville on September 15th. And we have her coach, Olympian, gold Olympian, John Howard. John, say hi to her. What, this show is going to be amazing because we're going to be talking about how to un untether your soul and what the beliefs and understandings and the actions that you need to take to really do that. All right, Todd, let's start it. Go. It's time to take a journey, to find your courage, break through your limits, and master your destiny. It's time for Ken D. Foster's Voices of Courage. Ken brings you some of the most courageous people on the planet that will inspire greatness within you and change your life for the better. It's time to see the unseeable, know the unknowable, and do the impossible. It's time for Voices of Courage. And here's your host, Ken D. Foster. Are you craving for a more natural, spiritual, or balanced life? Or maybe you've been exploring a more conscious way of living and bringing out your soul qualities of intuition, wisdom, power, strength. Well, if you've been wondering how to grow yourself, do I have the show for you? Today on Voices of Courage, I have the feminine power expert, Kirsten Asher, and later in the show, I have the holder of the overall land speed cycling world record, Denise Muller Karenik, and her bicycling coach, John Howard, who succeeded in obtaining Olympic gold in cycling. By the way, the new world record, as I mentioned, was just set September 15th. So we're going to be talking about the mindsets of the new feminine power and what are these women up to man this is crazy what, what's happening in the world but you know the most important part about this show for my audience is how to apply the principles and the mindsets of my guests to your own life so that you can expand what's possible and today's show is really dedicated to everybody that wants to tap into their own soul and really expand who you were meant to be I'm calling this show The Courage to Untether Your Soul, and I'm Kendi Foster, your host. So, I had a story that I came across that I thought was really appropriate to this show. And there was a prince in India, and he was captured by some thieves and taken away and taken to the slums. And he lived there in, uh, in the slums, in poverty, and eventually he really forgot who he was and then one day he had uh, he he noticed this woman riding up on this beautiful decorated horse from the palace and the woman saw him and she called him over and she called him by his name and he didn't really he didn't understand why how would this woman know me from the palace well, as it turns out, the woman calling his name was a sister. And she had found him in the slums. And she had t then she took him back to the palace. And when he got there, you know, he was still struggling. He was like, what happened? Because he, he was captured when he was a child. And he'd forgotten who he really was. But who he really was was a prince who was going to inherit the throne, the kingdom, right? Well, how many of us have forgotten who we really are, have lived in a place where we've forgotten what we can really accomplish in this world? We've forgotten who we are as how powerful we are, how brilliant we are, how we can really tap into the mindsets. I was working yesterday with a 70-year-old senior who was just an amazing guy. He's written a couple books. Uh, he's, got, um, he's got a lot of uh, charisma. And um, I asked him, I said something like, um, so tell me what your plans are uh, for, for your, all these dreams and ideas that you have. Because he had a lot of them. And he said, oh, 
you know, I, I, I have a lot of dreams, but I, I really don't have the ability to uh, access the technology, and I really don't have the ability to build a team around me. And I looked at him, I said, you know, you're 70 now. He says, yeah. I said, what would the 30-year-old that's inside of you say to that? Because see, at 30 years old, this man built a multi-billion dollar real estate empire. And he looked at me and he said, you got me. I know. There's so much in me. I can figure this out. And so now he's on his way to creating these amazing programs for seniors that have kind of lost their way, right? Isn't that the coolest thing? So, you know, if there's anything that defines the 21st century, it's uncertainty, right? We're uncertain about who we are, what we can do. Do we have the strength, the resources, the power, the presence? You know, really? Because, you know, here's the thing that I get as a coach for the last 22 years. I get that doubt and uncertainty is probably the greatest destructive force on the planet. You know, if we set our goals and then we start to doubt them, we're never going to succeed at anything. And, you know, the show is about not just about you expanding your presence. It's about deciding who you are in this new world that we're in, where there is a new respect for femininity for feminine feminine power in this world. My two guests are going to be talking about that today. But I'll just say this. When I woke up in 1992 and I looked at myself and I said, you know, you're kind of a jerk. You're really, you know, you've got, uh, you surrounded yourself with friends that really aren't friends. They're just in it for themselves. And I had to look at myself and I said, you know, it's all about me.com. I've become that. I've become the disloyal person. I've become the person that doesn't look at himself and grow and change. That just stays stagnant. And in that moment, I knew that I had to change. And I did. I said, you know, enough of this. I didn't know how I was going to change. I just knew I needed to find the support around me that could help me. Because my greatest thinking had got me where I was. And I submit that a lot of people listening to the show right now, listen, if your life is stuck and your relationship isn't working, maybe you're not exercising, maybe you're not uh, connecting with your family, you're estranged from them, maybe you're in a job, a dead-end job, and you know it's dead-end, but you really want, you're staying there for the retirement, or you're staying there for some reason that has been outdated, right? So if you're in that place, you're like a lot of us, you know? That's where I was. And here's what I found when I woke up. I found this, that there were positive characteristics of my own being that I wasn't really expressing. But I started to. I started opening up my creativity. I started to, to not make excuses and be a victim for my life. I took full responsibility. I decided that, you know, conviction, when I'm convic con convinced and I'm passionate about something, I'm not going to let anything stop me. I'm just going to keep moving forward, right? And I also got in touch with the feminine qualities that I had in me that I never expressed. And those were qualities such as empathy, vulnerability, humility, patience, collaboration, inclusiveness, creativity, nurturing, sharing, embracing, okay? So that is what this show is about. This, is, this show is really for you to listen to some of the experts that have really been able to take their lives and take the lives of thousands of others in some cases to another level because they've also tuned into these qualities. And listen, art society is, like I said, it's uncertain. There's a lot of uncertainty in the world. But there's one thing you can be certain about, and that is when you tune in to the power that is within your own being, all the answers lie there. All the Everything you've ever needed in this world is right inside of you. But if you don't take the time to connect, it's not going to help. So one of my favorite authors, Maureen Brown, um, she once said, vulnerability is the birthplace of everything we are hungry for. And here's what I know to be true. You've got to feel the pain 
to make the change. If you got areas in your life that are painful, that aren't working, that are really stopping you, and you're going like, oh, I don't want to deal with this now. I'll deal with it later. That's exactly your next area that you need to grow in. So I encourage you to start to look at those areas this week that you don't want to look at. But those are the areas that will actually create more joy, more peace, and more happiness in all areas of your life. All right, coming up on my next segment, I've got my special guest, Kirsten Asher. She's an expert on feminine presence and how to tap into your power as a woman, and I would submit as a man too. So look, we'll be right back. We'll be back with more Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Attention business owners. The feeling of being overwhelmed, stressed out, and facing difficult business challenges goes hand in hand with being an entrepreneur. But there are solutions, and it's time to explore the possibilities. You work hard as an entrepreneur. Give yourself the break you deserve. Ken D. Foster is the business coach for you. Ken has over 21 years of experience with leaders just like you who trust to share what is truly going on in their business and that thing called life. You're invited to set up a free conversation confidential consultation with Ken. His wisdom, guided methods, and unique strategies will bring you to new heights and breakthrough obstacles. Visit KenDFoster.com to set up your free confidential consultation. It's time to achieve your dreams because you deserve a successful business and a balanced, happy life. Sound great? Find out how to make this happen. Visit KenDFoster.com. That's KenDFoster.com. KenDFoster.com. Are you feeling stuck or in a holding pattern with your business or life and you're not doing the things you want or love? Then at some point, you're going to be faced with a decision. You'll either choose to keep living in your comfort zone and risk a life of mediocrity or increase your courage, step into your power and forge into the unknown where everything new becomes possible. If you're truly ready to live masterfully, then you need Ken D. Foster's newest book, The Courage to Change Everything, Strategies and Wisdom to Transform Your Life One Day at a Time. This powerful but simple guide provides you with 365 days of life-transforming wisdom, profound questions, and action steps that will increase your strength and open the doors to success. Stop wondering why your business or life isn't working. The answers are available now. Imagine if you had more courage or a another chance to start following your dreams to pick up your copy of the courage to change everything visit the courage to change everything.com that's the courage to change everything.com we're back with voices of courage and now your host ken d foster well welcome back i want to let you know this show is being brought to you by women's wisdom san diego's premier networking and relationship building group for purpose-driven and soul inspired female entrepreneurs you can find them at womenswisdom.net that's womenswisdom.net also i want to thank you for tuning in to voices of courage you can find us on the web at voicesofcourage.us where you can find all of our replays or you can just ask siri cortana or alexa to play voices of courage podcast wow what a show we have today we're talking about the courage to one tether your soul and i have a very special guest her name is kirsten asher she's the founder of fem method that's feminine embodiment method she's been studying dance movement therapy and for years kirsten teaches women to embody and flow rather than hustle and grind through the way you move breathe and think Kristen creates a space for women to explore their senses, emotions, reduce stress, and take ownership of their feminine expression while exploring the dynamics of the masculine and feminine in life, love, and sensuality. Kristen, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's so good to have you here. We've been wanting to do this for a long time. We have. I'm so stoked to be here. Yeah, that's great. So um, I want to know. Um, you know, there's a lot going on in this world with uh, with femininity right now. I mean, we're mm-hmm. I'm sitting here looking at the studio, and right now uh, uh, they're in they're talking about uh, the lady that Judge Kavanaugh was uh, that, uh, allegedly that uh, he assaulted. 
uh, you know, that's that's just opening up a lot of conversations around femininity in this world today. Mm-hmm. Um, how did you get in this feminine movement? How did you get there? What happened? Oh, that goes back. <laughs> uh, so I lived in Los Angeles before I was here in San Diego, and I found myself in a very masculine side where I was in more of an aggressive type mindset and mentality where it was more of an action, action, do, 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 do. And I felt very unaligned and I felt like I was crawling out of my skin. Um, It didn't feel good at all. And I was constantly asking myself, I'm a pretty happy person most of the time. And I was constantly asking myself why I wasn't happy or why I couldn't get happy. Uh, And this was coming up in my relationship as well. And I just realized that stepping back and getting into the personal development and getting into dance and movement and connecting again with myself and that feminine side brought me back into my skin and into my body and where I felt really, really good and where I can expand and grow from a more natural place. Uh, So when I moved back down to San Diego, I started developing a Femme Method, which is the feminine embodiment method, and teaching women to to really come back to themselves and you know whether that's you lose your identity in your work or career or uh in your family but dance was a huge part of my life from a young child and uh i just it's just such a powerful way to to you know i i uh i work with uh, uh, a lot of women and i've worked with several of them that uh have lost their 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 identity they've been in marriages for years and they come out and they really just don't know who they are anymore um how do they how do they retrace the steps to who they are and how does dance uh help them do that the, the methods that you use mm-hmm. it's well first of all i start with asking the women who they are outside of what they do so you ask somebody about themselves and they say you know i am an executive i'm a mother i'm a wife i'm this and that and it's so it's all their titles it's all your titles yes it's not necessarily who you are at the core so we go back into just getting in touch with movement and a lot of the what i do is the foundation of dance and hearing music and allowing it to move you and feeling that flow through your body and also coming up and finding your uh, like values and your morals and what actually you stand for and finding yourself again outside of what you do and being able to bring that within the movement and eventually you you will have emotions coming up you'll have things and it's just observation of those so okay. when those emotions come up are they are they, are they to be released or are they uh, you you look at i mean sometimes my emotions come up i don't even want to look at them i'm like <laughs> oh i don't like that emotion i'm out of here <laughs> what am i angry about today right yeah <laughs> but, yeah exactly yeah. well it's 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 feeling those and allowing those to come through because a lot of times we stuff down emotions or we're, we're told we're not allowed to feel them or you shouldn't Right. even look into that so we stuff them down all the time um so it's just giving yourself the opportunity to feel it and it might be in a, something that you've held on to years ago right. that's coming up and it's that's why it's more of an observation of what's going on instead of a judgment and trying to put a def- definition to it yeah you know one of the reasons i wanted to have you on the show is because you talk about the revolution that's going on uh with uh, what it means to be feminine mm mm-hmm. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's bringing back those feminine qualities that are still part of us. Whether you're man or woman, we have the masculine, feminine, the yin and yang within us. And we've been so in this masculine mindset and the patriarchy. And now it's swinging over to the matriarchy. And that's not so great either. It's it's coming back and forth and finding this balance between the two. And really embracing those feminine qualities and it doesn't mean that you have to be womanly as a yeah, man you know i and i get that even in the hearings going on today with mm-hmm. kavanaugh you know they've uh, basically it's a place where they've asked women to interview her you know and it's like we're not going to have men interview kavanaugh so much right i mean um uh christine uh, uh blasey mm-hmm. um but i you know that's extremes Right. I mean, now all of a sudden men can't interview it because there's going to be some upsets or, you know, it just it, seems, it just seems crazy to me. It is. It, there's a lot of up and downs and it's going to be a little choppy. I feel for the next couple of years, maybe 10 years of us trying to figure this all out and find ourselves and figure um, 
what is the best balance to have within us and then also in our society, but actually having uh, these, um, these women come back into that femininity that is innately in us. So how do they get back into their feminine uh, powers? Because, you know, a lot, I think, I think we reward, we reward, um, success. We reward, uh, you know, looking and talking and acting like a male in this society. I mean, we have for years in corporations, mm-hmm. right? So how do, how do we undo that? How do you help people undo, undo <laughs> that? I that like big, this. <laughs> that big bond of whatever that stuff, that yeah. rust that's, uh, that's over the soul. <laughs> that's called male rust. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way to put it. Um, it's, it's really empowering women to show up in their full self. And you can still be successful. You can still be financially successful, attain your goals, and also have these feminine qualities where you, you're operating more so in your feminine and then you just tap into the masculine when you need it. So if you have these goals that you need to get, great, set the goals and then go back to your feminine and how can you nurture those? How can you create um, something that works for you that's in alignment, whether it's taking steps, whether it's uh, talking to different people, whether it's creating a team to get your goals achieved. Hmm. You know, it's it's very much so of, this dance between the masculine and feminine and also sharing that with other people that are in these corporations, you know, it's, it's changing their mindset too. Right. And their view. Okay. And, um, you know, there's another part that comes up here with, uh, sensuality and sexuality and uh, there's a whole mixture of what is this and how does it, how does it apply today? Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I grew up in a in a world where it was really uh, a patriarchal world that men dominated, and women were kind of subservient to us. And you know that's that's really changed. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's changing at least in our country. You know, there's a lot of countries that hasn't changed at all. Saudi Arabia is one. Yeah. Right. Well, that's not true. They've they've actually changed too. They've given their women the right to vote and right to drive now. So hey, you know, we got progress going on. <laughs> but um, you know, how do you? Um, how do we dance that dance of femininity and sexuality in, in the new in the new uh, in the new area here? And you know, I love that question, don't you? It's a it's a good question. Okay, it's a good because, one because uh, yeah, I'm just about out of time. So go ahead and answer that as fast as you can, and then we'll we'll a- answer the rest. Actually, you know what I want to do before we do that? Let's take we'll, let's answer that at the next section. Okay. of the program, but tell people how to get a hold of you right now. You can uh, find me on Instagram at Feminine Embodiment Method, or you can go to my website, which is femmethod.com with one M. Okay, F-E-M, F-E Method.com, mm-hmm. F-E Method.com. And in the next segment, uh, I know you got a free gift for our audience, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. We'll be talking about sexuality and sensuality. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more. Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Are you feeling stuck or in a holding pattern with your business or life and you're not doing the things you want or love? Then at some point, you're going to be faced with a decision. You'll either choose to keep living in your comfort zone and risk a life of mediocrity or increase your courage, step into your power, and forge into the unknown where everything new becomes possible. If you're truly ready to live masterfully, then you need Ken D. Foster's newest book, The Courage to Change Everything, Strategies and Wisdom to Transform Your Life One Day at a Time. This powerful but simple guide provides you with 365 days of life-transforming wisdom, profound questions, and action steps that will increase your strength and open the doors to success. Stop wondering why your business or life isn't working. The answers are available now. Imagine if you had more courage or another chance to start following your dreams. To pick up your copy of The Courage to Change Everything, visit thecouragetochangeeverything.com. That's thecouragetochangeeverything.com. Would you like to help someone in need to move from poverty to prosperity? Stars of Courage, a 501c3 nonprofit, is looking for established life coaches with experience in education and career mentorship to build confidence and create clear paths to success. Join our team of experienced coaches in a wide variety of fields, equipped with warm hearts with a passion for lifting up those in need. Our Stars of Courage. Find out how you can make a difference at starsofcourage.org. That's starsofcourage.org. We're back with Voices of Courage. And now your host, Ken D. Foster. 
You know, in society today, women are finding their voices and powers in all area of business and life. And one group that's been empowering women for over 25 years is called Women's Wisdom. It's the premier networking relationship building group for purpose-driven entrepreneurs in San Diego. This group of entrepreneurial women, they meet on the second Friday of each month, and you can find them at womenswisdom.net. That's womenswisdom.net. And I want to thank you, my listeners. Thank you for your likes and comments and emails that you send me all the time about the show. I really appreciate it. I appreciate your feedback. And um, you can find us, for those of you that are new to the show, at VoicesOfCourage.us, VoicesOfCourage.us, where you can get all of our replays, and um, now and then we give uh, pretty cool little giveaways up there. Last week we were giving away uh, 25 tickets to a three-day event in San Diego that was uh, $2,000 per ticket event. So, you know, call, go to uh, VoicesOfCourage.us and check us out. And subscribe to our uh, list so that you can get in tune with some of the gifts we give away. All right, today the show is called The Courage to Untether Your Soul. Your soul. What is the soul? Hmm. Is that part of you that is knocking, knocking every single day, wants to get out, wants to unleash itself, but there are challenges that you might be uh, holding on to. So in studio, I have Kirsten Asher. She is the founder of Fem Method, Feminine Embodiment Method. And she is talking about sexuality and sensuality and the difference in today's society and how how do we approach that. Kristen, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. So to that is sensuality doesn't always have to be linked with sexuality. It definitely can. However, sensuality, the base of the word is senses, getting back in touch with all five of your senses. And that's one of the one of the things that we bring into Femme Method is the sense of touch, sight, smell, hearing, and through this movement, through hearing the music and the touch on your skin and really bringing back to, you know, even smell for women is a, is a big thing as well. And getting really, really in touch with those and figuring out what you like and what excites you, what turns you on, what makes you happy and getting into these, um, this sensual side outside of sexuality. You know, it reminds me of some of the newscasters uh, when you said that. And I'm just, you know, the talking heads, right? All you see is their head and all they do is talk. And I always feel like they're not in their body at all. Like they're, they've somehow, they, they, they're like a little balloon, a balloon head, right? And they're just sitting there talking, right? And you're hearing the same stuff day in and day out from these guys. So what you're talking about is being back in your body, embracing all of you, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of people that are numb in society, I think it's not just women. I think it's men, too. We're really numb from the head down because we've been spent so much time in the head. So how does Fem Method help people to really get back into their body? Like, what what are some of the movements that you might encourage people to do? There's a lot of uh, different types of movements. So I'll lead you through either opening your chest. So a lot of us, if you're not confident or if you're sitting all the time or... <laughs> Uh, if we have a tendency to roll our shoulders forward and breathe really shallow and we don't give our bodies the opportunity to take these deep breaths, to nourish ourselves with breath. So we start with chest openers and rolling your shoulders back and standing up straight or sitting up straight and really breathing down into your core. And then we open up the hips. We uh, move the torso and just get that open and aligned because so many people have desk jobs or they have so much tension where they they start to hold it within different places of their body. And then all of a sudden you have a shoulder ache and you don't know why. And five years later, you still have that same shoulder ache. <laughs> well, I can remember when I was first doing the show and I'd be holding my breath and then I want to go talk to somebody. <laughs> and there'd be no breath there. Um, yeah. So that's kind of what you're talking about. We, we kind of, we tense up when we have stress in our bodies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so I want to shift gears a little bit because I know with Fem Method that you know this helps relationships to get better. How so? And do you have any uh, uh, keys to stop that downward spiral that people get in a relationship? Right? I'm right. Mm-hmm. You're wrong. You're you're wrong. I'm right. <laughs> exactly. Know? Yeah. Exactly. So with Fem Method, it's um, move, breathe, think. So the way you move, the way you breathe, and then there's this thinking portion of 
how that shows up in, in your life. And if you're a woman and you're bringing yourself back to that feminine side, now you're creating polarity within your relationship. You know, if your man is more masculine or your partner is in the more masculine side and you're giving yourself the opportunity to be in the feminine side, you're creating this natural polarity that allows the relationship to develop even more, right? There's, there's more attraction. and Yeah, you know, I think, I think a lot of uh, relationships fall apart because women want to be in their feminine spirit, right, in their feminine energy. But when a man sees that, he's, he, actually, he starts to think sexuality, mm. right? That happens. Um, so I think there's a part, yeah, yeah, I don't know if Femme Method teaches this, about respect and, and trust with one another. How, how does that work? It starts with boundaries and mm. being knowing what your boundaries are and what your non-negotiables are and being comfortable saying that. So it's, it's being open and honest within conversation and saying, if you're going on a first date, if you're dating someone you're okay with and you're okay expressing that and asking whoever you're talking to, to be open to understanding your experience right. and also open to understanding their feedback and their experience. And instead of seeing it as this, um, butting heads, right. We all have different experiences. So what I say, you may have a different feeling of how it comes off. And we have the opportunity to talk about that and how it came off or what you felt when I said X, Y, Z. Right. You know, so really opening up that communication between two people. Yeah, that's good. And, you know, when we're talking fem meth and we're talking this, uh, you know, we're really talking about um, not male, female per se. We're talking about the energetics behind being a man and being a female. Is that a woman, right? So mm -hmm. let me ask you. Um, so, because you, all of us have male qualities and female qualities in us. Okay, how do you balance those qualities within you as as a woman, for for instance? I and how do you recommend people do this? <laughs> I say you take inventory of where you show up in your life. So, if you're in your career, how do you want to show up in that? Do you need to be very goal oriented? Do you have deadlines that you need to do? Maybe. Mm -hmm. In that side of your life, it's a little bit more masculine and you can still bring in the creative sense of, you know, here's a goal that I need to set. How can I creatively create a solution to to get that goal? Yeah. You know, and so it's it's trial and error and finding out what works better for you. If you go into the family sense, maybe creating that uh, patience with your family that you're in your more you're a feminine side and you're able to have that masculine over there as the protector still except you're creating this nurturing, you're, you're taking care of everybody, you're taking care of yourself. Your self-care is a big one to come back into that feminine side and for men to have self-care as well. That's great. Now, do you work with men and women or just women? I mainly work with women, okay. and I, there, there are men that I work with. I do uh, retreats that are men and women as well because okay. um, it's, it's, you know, they're just as disconnected. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes. Oh, well, absolutely. Yeah, we we all need to, we all need to grow mm -hmm. and, and learn and, and uh, you know have better boundaries and uh, tune into ourselves and understand understand who we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if we really want to have a, a a life that's filled with success, joy, happiness, and and pleasures. Um, so let me um, let me just tell up my audience this. Um, you have a free gift to give away today. So can you tell us a little bit about that and where they can get that at? Absolutely. It is a uh an embodiment guide. It's the lighter version. It basically helps you get a little bit more in tune with where you're at, where if you're holding any tension in your body, if anything's coming up for you. And then there's also um, a guided dance meditation that they can listen to. It's You can listen to it whenever, wherever. You could be standing up, you could be seated. Um, but this basically gives you a chance to get into your body and hear the music and actually feel it. And I guide you through these different steps. That is so cool. Okay. How do they get that? Where, where do we find that at? They can go to femmethod.com forward slash courage forward slash courage. Okay. So F E method.com forward slash courage. Yep. F E method.com forward slash courage. Okay, good. All right. So we'll listen. This has been really inspiring. I, I love what you're doing. I love the fact that you're here. I, I, I wanted to get you on for a long time. You're here. Um, I hope you'll come back and visit me again and, and give us some more insights about the male-female uh, experience and how we can really balance that within our own souls. Yeah, so, thank you. All right, Krista <laughs> Nasher, thank you so much for joining me. Listen, I'm coming up next segment with the new world record holder 
for cycling at uh, 183.9 miles an hour, which was just set on September 16th. My next guest, Therese, D- Denise Muller Karenik. We'll be right back. We'll be back with more Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Are you feeling stuck or in a holding pattern with your business or life and you're not doing the things you want or love? Then at some point, you're going to be faced with a decision. You'll either choose to keep living in your comfort zone and risk a life of mediocrity or increase your courage, step into your power and forge into the unknown where everything new becomes possible. If you're truly ready to live masterfully, then you need Ken D. Foster's newest book, The Courage to Change Everything, Strategies and Wisdom to Transform Your Life One Day at a Time. This powerful but simple guide provides you with 365 days of life-transforming wisdom, profound questions, and action steps that will increase your strength and open the doors to success. Stop wondering why your business or life isn't working. The answers are available now. Imagine if you had more courage or another chance to start following your dreams. To pick up your copy of The Courage to Change Everything, visit thecouragetochangeeverything.com. That's thecouragetochangeeverything.com. Would you like to help someone in need to move from poverty to prosperity? Stars of Courage, a 501c3 nonprofit, is looking for established life coaches with experience in education and career mentorship to build confidence and create clear paths to success. Join our team of experienced coaches in a wide variety of fields, equipped with warm hearts with a passion for lifting up those in need. Our Stars of Courage. Find out how you can make a difference at starsofcourage.org. That's starsofcourage.org. We're back with Voices of Courage. And now your host, Ken D. Foster. Well, this show is being brought to you by Women's Wisdom, San Diego's premier networking and relationship building group for purpose-driven and soul-inspired female entrepreneurs. You can find them at womenswisdom.net. Talk about soul-inspired entrepreneurs. Well, I have one in uh, in my studio right now. I'd like to introduce you to Denise mueller Karenik. Denise is a CEO of a thriving security business, mother of three, motivational speaker, and a national cycling champion. Now, if that isn't enough, in 2016, Denise became the first woman in cycling history to attempt and succeed in setting a paced bicycle land speed record at 147.75 miles per hour on the Bonneville Salt Flats. Hmm, pretty amazing, right? Well, get this. On September 16th of this year, she made cycling history again and is now the holder of the overall land speed world record at 183.9 miles per hour on a bike. Denise, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I want to introduce your coach, too, because he's here. John Howard is an Olympian cyclist from the United States who set the land speed record uh, back in the day in 1985, July 20th to be exact, at 152.2 miles per hour. He's a competitor. He competed at the uh, 1968, 72, and 76 Olympic Games. Howard won A gold medal in 1971 at the Pan Am Games in road cycling. And he is a four-time national road cycling champion and won the 1981 Ironman Triathlon Championship in Hawaii. These are not lightweights, folks. (laughs) These two are amazing. So John John, uh, stepped up to uh, help pass it on to get Denise not only the uh, 2016 record, but also the 2018 record. John, welcome to the show. Thanks, Ken. Yeah. So, hey, Denise, how you feeling? Oh, man. I, I'm still on cloud nine, recovering, but uh, still on cloud nine after achieving this amazing record. Oh, my gosh. This is just, uh, what a record. You know, I followed it the whole way, and I was happy to be able to contribute a little bit to the team, you know, working with you for the last, uh, since April, I guess. So, um, wow. You know, did it go smooth? <laughs> Um, No. Uh, uh, Usually the hardest goals to attain are ones that come with a lot of sacrifice and also a lot of challenges. And this one certainly had its challenges uh, from many different aspects in preparation, um, all the way down to the trailer on the uh, hauling the vehicle, the vehicle, tire issues, you, you, you name it. We had quite a few. 
but it makes the uh, the actual achievement that much sweeter. So at, at one point, you know, did you feel like this wasn't going to happen? Did you ever feel that way? Yes, I actually unfortunately did, and it felt like it was things that were beyond our control. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it was really difficult to even think about the fact that we wouldn't even make it out to the salt flats. And there are going to be lots of people out there. Our team members going to be flying in from all sorts of different areas, including out of the country, to be there to support and be part of this and the fact that we would probably not even be able to show up. So we overcame those challenges and there were three major ones and we were able to get there and then we still had a few more challenges. So, so we, we how, just had how to did keep you, How did you keep the faith? I mean, when big obstacles show up, you know, I think uh, for a lot of us, you know, you're like a lot of people just collapse. How did you keep going? There's no room for collapse. When you've put everything into this and everybody else is also dependent upon being part of this, you just persevere and you just make do with what you have, find creative uh, uh, creative ways to overcome, and which is what we did. And we are actually very successful. And I think that success also allows us in any future endeavor to look back and go, yes, but remember back when X, Y, or Z happened and we were able to overcome it. So that gives you <coughs> renewed hope on other things that may achieve challenge you in the future yeah how did, how did it come about that you even set the goal because i mean at, you already held the women's uh, record for 143 why why did why did you go okay i think i need to break all records oh, well that that's an interesting story the dynamic was shay holbrook our pace car driver we were using a modified range rover in 2016 that uh, was from hohen that um, sponsored us and her and i We finally got in sync with each other, much like two dancers. We have to be in sync with each other in order to accomplish this record. And we had some failed attempts, and then we got finally so in sync. And the 147.7 that we achieved was, in a sense, without almost trying. It was supposed to be just a a good, solid run, and we did a record run. So we knew we had so much more in us. We came to the salt the next day on the last day of the event, and it was rained out. So we were so frustrated that we left, we basically left it out on the salt. And so we decided to come back the next year, which ended up being two years to take the overall record. Gee, my niece, that's crazy. All right. Now I want to know, how did you, for, let me just ask you, how did you enroll John in this whole process? (laughs) Um, I think the roles are reversed on that. He enrolled me. He enrolled you. (laughs) Um, Okay. Yes. If we go back, um, John was very instrumental in getting me into bicycle racing when I was 14. And then he was instrumental in getting me back on the bike after two decades, two plus decades of being off the bicycle. And he saw something that was still there as far as my potential. And he could speak more to this, but he was then the one that said, you realize no woman has ever done this record. And instantly I was on board. So he not only started my bike racing career, he got me back on the bicycle. And then he was the one to uh, to basically come up with this opportunity, which I immediately grabbed onto. Well, John, I, I feel really honored to have you in studio also. And, you know, I, I think uh, it seems like I read somewhere you're also a 20-time national cycling uh, champion or you're some old record. I, I, I'd love to go to your house someday and see you went to <laughs> his which, museum, his yeah. museum, yeah. right? Because he is, he is uh, you know, you're really a living legend in the cycling industry. And, um, you know, you've really, you've, you, the, the thing with you, it's not, a lot of living le- there's living legends and then there's living legends there's people that you know they create they create a, a record or two but you've been doing this for how many years a lot a lot yeah that's yeah, yeah. that's about all i can say i personally don't i'm not sure there's a lot of nutritional value in 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 fame and that that sort of a claim i i look at every day as being a new start and i'm just out here to do as much inspiring and and uh as possible i you know i'm denise is i'm very proud of denise and her efforts to to break this record but the the challenges that we overcame uh she just barely hinted at some of those uh were almost insurmountable in many respects but we did overcome each one of them it's not in her personality and this is one of the reasons i work with her to, to give up uh, under any circumstances, and uh, she certainly proved her mettle out there. Uh, I, I, there were, were times that I was so frustrated, I just wanted to yeah. say, this is it, but she hung on. I, I was going to ask you that. <laughs> what, what are the qualities that you saw in Denise that you went, you know what, this is the person I'm going to spend my time, my energy, my effort 
uh, my money, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, helping uh, this person. Why? Why did we? Uh, why did you do that? Well, what she, were the she truly was a, a athletic prodigy in in many respects. She had uh, ability that I think was all part of her DNA. She she uh, excelled in. Uh, areas that I didn't, so I was intrigued by that. Her, her Denise is all fast twitch. I'm all slow twitch. So we had a perfect combination in training together. We we worked out a lot, and, and I guided her and gave her um, what I what I believe was uh, the the right steps in terms of balancing uh, the whole thing. And and certainly when when we trained it was far more than just riding the bike a lot of work in the gym and um, she's an extremely powerful athlete and i saw that from the very beginning and i just wanted to encourage it that's good you know and, and talk about balance okay like denise you run a company you're a ceo i mean listen you know you're 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 doing that that's a full-time thing in itself where did you find the time to go and train for this what did you do i mean a lot of people don't set their goals and do it because they say I've got too much on my plate. I can't take anything else on. How did you take this on? It's all about priorities and balance. And you know what? There's always going to be more time that you can spend at work, more time that you can spend training, more time that you can spend in any one place. It's a matter of balance. And everybody's going to know where their own balance is based on what their own goals and expectations are. Um, yes, there are things that I could have done more and better at work because I had to minimize my time at work to about three days a week of being at work, but I had some wonderful managers that were being able to handle other elements of the business. My oldest son is taking over as the third generation, so he just, within the last couple of months, stepped up to full time, which has also allowed me to be out at the Salt Flats and pretty much disconnected for a period of three-plus weeks during the intensity of this um, event. Um, but the training, it was a very much a priority also for my health. And you know what? That's the thing is it's always about balance. And that's, I you just have to have the priorities in order. Wow. Okay. Well, listen, I want to find out all about the training. So uh, when we come back in our next segment, we'll be going to talk. I want to talk about what the heck did that look like? <laughs> <laughs> How do you train to go 183.9 miles per hour? We'll be right back. We'll be back with more Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Are you feeling stuck or in a holding pattern with your business or life and you're not doing the things you want or love? Then at some point, you're going to be faced with a decision. You'll either choose to keep living in your comfort zone and risk a life of mediocrity or increase your courage, step into your power and forge into the unknown where everything new becomes possible. If you're truly ready to live masterfully, then you need Ken D. Foster's newest book, The Courage to Change Everything, Strategies and Wisdom to Transform Your Life One Day at a Time. This powerful but simple guide provides you with 365 days of life-transforming wisdom, profound questions, and action steps that will increase your strength and open the doors to success. Stop wondering why your business or life isn't working. The answers are available now. Imagine if you had more courage or another chance to start following your dreams. To pick up your copy of The Courage to Change everything visit the courage to change everything.com that's the courage to change everything.com we're back with voices of courage and now your host ken d foster are you someone that wants to untether your soul well that's our topic today and in studio i have the new world record holder for cycling at 183.9 miles per hour Denise Miller Karenik and her coach, Olympian Gold, John Howard. Welcome to Thank this you. segment. I, I'm so I, you know, I just feel honored to be with both of you, man. Mm -hmm. It's been it's been a journey and um I know you've you've worked hard. Speaking of working hard, how do you train for something like this? What do you do, Denise? Well, uh, you listen to your coach, obviously. I, I was going to defer that over to Coach John Howard because okay. he is the coach yeah, and he has uh, been my coach for the cycling, a mentor in this in, in, in the whole endeavor here and has really coordinated all of my training. So. That's good. Yeah, I, I want to know everything from, you know, what bike, what size, what do you do? What, are the, what does this look like, John? Broad spectrum. We uh, started out with a lot of base training. She worked with... Uh, uh, a strength coach, uh, Jacques DeVore, up at Sirens and Titans Gym in L.A. to get the uh, power 
uh, building a, a, a strength program was something that Denise was already familiar with because she was a gym rat during those years when she was off the bike. So it fit right into her wheelhouse. And my, my focus was to first get the mileage base uh, down. And uh, she did that by uh, doing uh, the Million Dollar Challenge, uh, which was a sponsored by the Challenge Athlete Foundation here in San Diego. We both support that cause. And we rode our bikes from San Francisco to San Diego. And boy, that was a tough one for her because she'd been off the bike for a long time. Oh, that's where she started. We had some... <clears throat> I've never seen Denise actually um, at a point of breakdown, but that was that, that first day out of... Where was it? Big Sur. Right before Big Sur, she, she just came apart at the seams and you know, the saddle was causing her a lot of discomfort. So uh, I, I thought we were we were done at that point, but she managed to find something that that did work and, and uh, came back, and we made it all the way down to San Diego. And, and uh, we did another couple of years of base training, and so I encouraged her to do some, some actual competitive cycling, which was her forte in the beginning. And, and uh, she won a national championship, and... And then with with everyone watching her, uh, basically a target on her back, she came back and won a second national championship. And Criterium, it's the most dangerous, difficult segment to win a, a national title in, and she did it back-to-back. -back. So that blew me away. I couldn't uh, imagine being happier after that. So then we started focusing more on pure speed, uh, the the leg speed that it would take. How to, many watts that you need? The wattage to, reads. Yeah. Uh, we did the motor pacing down at the San Diego Velodrome mm -hmm. behind a electric motorcycle, uh, and her speed went up continually, uh, approaching over forty miles an hour, and. We do a group And this ride. is under her own power, 40 yeah, miles an well, hour, in a well, flat, right? Well, she was off the motorcycle, on and off the motorcycle, but yeah, um, yeah that's fast. That's, that's fast. That's very fast. I don't know if anybody's me. ever, my audience has been on a bicycle at 40 miles an hour, but that, that is kicking butt. Well, yeah. then the other, the other thing that I think uh, was central in terms of the preparation was a group ride that we do. Uh, she stopped doing, we did two rides one on Wednesday, one on Saturday. We started motor pacing. So, so let me ask you this. How, how often did she train? Like, was this a five-day-a-week, uh, two-day-a-week? I think, think six-day-a-week. Six-day-a-week. Uh, considering the, the strength work. That, and, and so you were doing mostly strength work in the end, so you weren't doing mileage. Is that right? Well, that started to taper because you yeah. want it, it detracts from leg speed. So right. the right. pacing brought the, the final kick. And we do a group ride with a lot of good men on the Saturday. Very few women in this ride. Um, and there's a, it finishes with a sprint, which is a, just an explosive effort at the end. And I know Denise well enough to know that when she's on, she's right there at the finish. But to actually win that sprint against Category 1, 2, 3 men, that's not easy to do. And she back-to-back -back won two in a row. <laughs> well, that kind of leads to so, the world record and beating all the men in there. So, you know, what, you know, one of the things, Denise, um, uh, I'm wondering about is the, you know, and I looked at the bike when I first saw the bike and I, yeah, you know, we met and I think I have pictures of us with that bike. That bike was interesting looking. How did it perform for you when you were uh, out on the salt flats? The bicycle did what it needed to do. It's a very customized bicycle, as you could imagine. Nothing you could purchase. It was built locally by a gentleman named Len Lockmiller, who built the frame. It's carbon fiber, about three to five times stiffer than the carbon fiber frames that you'll see out there on the um, on the road. Yeah. Um, but it has an elongated wheelbase and 17-inch tires, which gives us lower center of gravity and better stability. It has a steering dampener on it. It has motorcycle rims and and um, com and tires on it that are speed rated for what we were doing because you can't find regular bicycle componentry for the moving parts to be able to withstand 180 miles an hour. So um, 
Um, a lot of it was very customized. We had a release. I was in charge of doing the release because I am towed for the first mile and a half of the five mile course because it's a single gear bicycle, which means it's like having a car with only overdrive. You're not going to drive out of the parking lot and overdrive because the engine can't turn that gear. Right. And so that's for the first mile and a half. I'm towed up to a speed where I can start turning the cranks and then I release, but I stay in the draft for the next three and a half miles, continuing to increase in speed. That's awesome, Matt. Well, listen, um, I'm out of time but uh, denise thank you so much for being here john it's been an honor i really appreciate you being here kirsten thank you for being on our show today it's uh what a show this has been so denise how do they get a hold of you uh if media wants to get a hold of you or or maybe somebody wants to uh, hire you to go speak right now would love to do so uh the project speed.com Okay, the projectspeed.com. If you, uh, Denise is a keynote speaker. She's very powerful in what she does. Her message is powerful, as you know, uh, by just listening her to her today. So I encourage my uh, audience to get in touch with her and help take all of our lives to the next level. All right, listen, I'm going to end this show on this because this is what I kept hearing everybody say. Set your goal. <clears throat> get clear with your passion. Understand that it's going to be an obstacle showing up. And when those obstacles can come, Denise and John and Kirsten, everybody say, never, ever, 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 ever give up. And you will accomplish what you want to accomplish. Okay, listen, uh, you can uh, like us on Facebook, and you can also find uh, recordings to all my shows on Voices of Courage. Thanks for joining us for Voices of Courage with next time, Ken D. Foster. Learn more about Ken, see the unseeable, be a guest on the show, and sponsorship and opportunities by impossible. visiting voicesofcourage.us. Be sure to join us next Sunday at 10 a.m. as Ken brings more stories of courage that will inspire greatness within you and change your life for the better. This has been Voices of Courage with Ken D. Foster. Where there is